It's been a hot minute since I've posted a video. The reason why is because I have decided that in for my New Year's resolution, I said I was going to take better care of myself. So I made my first doctor's appointment that I've had in 20 years and um, we're trying to get some things figured out with what's going on with me. But anyway, um, I had to go to a cardiologist. I have had uh, a murmur, I don't know what it is, since I was a teenager. And I've had to have EKGs and echocardiograms done in the past. And so my doctor sent me to a cardiologist and they decided to have me wear a heart monitor um, for two weeks. And so I was like, well, you know, I'm not big on talking about health stuff. I don't like doing that on this channel. But the reason why I decided to talk about uh, wearing a heart monitor for two weeks is just in case any of you ever get into the position to where your doctor's like, I think I'm gonna have you wear a heart monitor or something like that. Um, this will let you know kind of what it's like and what my experience has been wearing this. Now I am wearing the Zio XT. So this is what it looks like for the Zio. And the nurse that came in was like, that was going to put it on me. She, uh, the first thing she, I still have it on at this moment. It's right there. This is where they put it. Yeah. It's a little dark around the edges because I've had this on for two weeks. So that's what it's like. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's a little bitty, just a little bit of a green light in there. And as long as it's making contact, it's green. If it loses contact, it turns orange so that you know. So she came in and she swabbed the area with alcohol and then she took a piece of sandpaper and she said, I'm going to sand you. And I was like, okay. So she took a piece of sandpaper and she started rubbing over the area. And I guess what it does is it helps raise your skin or whatever so it'll stick better. But it makes sure it's kind of making sure there's no oils on it or anything like that. And it was honestly, it wasn't painful. It was like being licked in the same area by a hundred cats at one time. <laughs> so at first it was, I was like, eh, that's not bad at all. And then she went back over it and then she went back over it. And so that was just like, hmm. So this is what it's like being attacked by a bunch of like really kissy cats. So it, it wasn't pleasant, but there was nothing painful. I'm a complete weenie. There was nothing painful about it at all. It was just weird feeling <laughs> to have somebody sanding on your skin. So then she stuck that on and um, she said that you don't have to wear it all the time, but the more you wear it, the more data they get. And because I never know what's going to trigger my uh, palpations or whatever it is, I never know, my heart flutters. And I don't never know what's going to trigger it, so I decided I'm just going to leave it on the entire two weeks. So, what you do is you wear the monitor, and then it comes in this box. You have to keep the box. You have to. It has a book on the inside of the box. And what happens is, let me turn to an empty, an empty paper. Okay. So what happens is if you have a uh, problem, then the middle of this, I'm not gonna do it, but the middle of this actually clicks down. So you, if, if something's going on, whether it's a chest pain or you skip a beat or anything like that, you go and you click it. And then you get in your book and you write down what time it was that you clicked it, what the symptoms were that you were having and what you were doing um, at the moment that it happened and then that way when they get the heart monitor back they can look at the readout they can measure up okay at this time the patient clicked and this is what was going on at this time so that helps them figure out if there is a pattern um, or if maybe what you think you're going is happening like I had chest pains last night and honestly, it could have been gas. It probably more than likely was. But because it was a tightness in my chest, I went ahead and clicked it and I marked it down. 
And if they look on the thing and say, oh, she had chest pain and tightness at this time, and they look down and was like, no, her heart was reading normal, well, then it, it was gas. But just in case, they have that information so that if something was going on with my heart, they know about it. And so that's really cool. And at the end of your two weeks, which is today, um, you open up the back of the booklet and they come with adhesive remover for your skin and you peel it off, which I'm going to peel it off on camera, but you peel it off and then you stick it on the back right here and then you put it in the box and you tape the box up really really good and then you stick it in your mailbox and it gets mailed back out now i'm kind of upset because normally my mailman does not come until around two o'clock and it is hours before that and she just went by so i actually missed the mailman even though i got up early so that i wouldn't so it'll go in the mail tomorrow okay what is it like to actually have one on now there's no there's no like electrical thing that you can feel now when I first put it on the first day that it was on um, I was in the grocery store and I was really tired anyway so my heart was kind of pounding kind of hard and plus I had the anxiety of having to go having went to the doctor which my my, my blood pressure my anxiety goes up really high going to the doctor and um, I could feel my pulse behind this a couple of times and that freaked me out because I'm like I said I'm a weenie I don't like anything medical at all at all and I'm the kind of person that I want my I want my body to function behind the scenes and me not be aware of it like I don't like feeling my heartbeat I don't like feeling my pulse like if I've been running and your veins pop up and you can feel your heart pounding in your ears I don't like that it freaks me out because I have such severe health anxiety um, so it was a couple times I felt that on the first day and it was more than likely because I was hyper aware of everything that was going on with my heart and I had anxiety and I was exhausted. So my heart was pounding hard anyway. So it wasn't anything to do with this. It was personally me and I could feel that behind there. And then, but up after that, you know, that really hasn't been an issue. Um, I think there have been a couple times when I felt like I felt it, but it, I was I was having anxiety. Um, sleeping, sleeping is a bit of a pain because it's right there. Now, like I said, you could take it off, but I I don't think that it would be wise because you want them to see what your heart is doing at all times. So. I, the thing that bothered me the most is that I am a side sleeper and I sleep on this side. So when you lay down, it, it pushes you together and you, so like when I'm laying on my side, it's pushing that tape up. So I'm constantly, I haven't slept great in two weeks. So I don't sleep good anyway, but I haven't slept real great in two weeks because it seems like every time I would roll over and I would feel the, the tape on my skin, because it would bunch up, I would do like this, like I'm waking up doing this, like making sure that the contacts are really good because I'm very paranoid about it not making contact because I was scared that if it came off, that I wouldn't be able to put it back on in the exact same spot or maybe it wouldn't ever make enough contact, it wouldn't get the reading. Now, if you do take it off and you stick it back on, just take some, she said take some band-aids, but I actually have medical tape at the house um, for actual bandages. And you can just take medical tape or band-aids or whatever and stick it across here so that it adheres back to your skin good. But I was always scared it wouldn't make enough contact to actually make a good reading. So I never screwed with it. So every time I would turn over, which way, even, even this way, if I turn this way, it's bunching it up right here. I don't, I don't even know if you can see, but you know how, you know how your skin does. And like you lay down and everything kind of bunches up, especially if you're a woman or if you have any kind of weight on you, then it's going to like bunch together. And so it would bunch up and it would feel weird, but it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't hurt or anything. It's just, it's a foreign object stuck to your body and it's not natural. It's not normal for it to be stuck, anything to be stuck on your body like that. So yeah, 
you definitely notice it's there. And um, another thing is, and I'm fixing to have to do it right now. I even though it's right here, I always have problems with my bra straps falling down. But it feels like this bra strap on this side have has fallen down a lot more while I've been wearing this because the bra strap comes about an inch away from it but it just seems like it's pushing down my shoulder and maybe it's because I'm so worried about this being touched on accident the dog hit my chest one time and I was thinking did she click it did she click it <laughs> but yeah it pushes down your bra strap it, it seems at least it did for me or it seems like coincidentally maybe if it's not doing it it just happens to be a coincidence that this side of my bra strap is coming down more often than this side does so yeah if if you wear a bra that is a, a factor that you may have to deal with um the dog the dog crawling up on my chest giving me hugs blah 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 you're hyper aware of, oh my gosh, did, did, did something touch this? Did it accidentally click it? Because I don't want to send any false readings because you don't want them to think this person's making everything up because there's all these clicks, but nothing's happened. So I decided that if if I, if I something did happen and I heard it, because you can hear it click, I go go like that. So if you hear it click, I was like, if, if nothing was going on and it was an accident, it was a dog, I'm going to write it down in the book. Um, and say nothing was happening, it was an accidental click, that way they would know. But if you're asleep, you don't know if you're accidentally touching it. And I, when I sleep, I curl up and I do my hands like this a lot because I'll curl up in a ball. And I, I was constantly bumping the side of it, which of course was making me like do like this. And I was like feeling to see if I, and I was thinking, did I click it? Did I click it? Because in the middle of the night, you're not aware of what you're doing. And so I was always kind of scared of clicking it in the middle of the night. So that's another thing that you may have to deal with. But like I said, it's not a big deal, but I didn't want to give any false readings. So I was constantly waking up because it's like I said, every, it feels like every time I would have to roll over or I would change positions, I would hit it. Like I just, I just went like this to act and I just hit it um, on the side right here. And I didn't want to give any false readings at all. Okay, taking a shower. Now, the nurse told me that you can keep it on while you're taking a shower. And she said to let the water run over your shoulder from behind. In other words, don't turn into the water. Well, I wanted to be, so it's a little bit water resistant, but it's not waterproof. So obviously you, you can take a shower, but you can't go swimming or take a bath. You can't like submerge in a bath or anything like that. But me, being me, I decided to go the extra step and I actually took a piece of saran wrap when I would take a shower and I would cut little pieces of my medical tape off and I taped a piece of saran wrap over this part of my neck and right through here and just covered it up and gave it just a little bit of extra protection from the water now even after taking a shower my skin was still a little bit damp under there but it wasn't enough to like I was worried I wasn't worried about triggering this like ruining it with the water I was worried that this would the sticky part would come loose and like I said I had fears that it would lose contact if I pulled it off or if it came loose or anything like that and I tried to tape it down myself so that's what I did I made a little patch of <laughs> saran wrap and I did turn into the shower because unless you, I'm sorry, I know this is TMI, but unless you have a shower wand, there are times when you have to turn into the water and, and let, let it hit certain areas so that you can rinse very well. So I turn into the shower and I always have my towels thrown over the, um, the shower bar anyways, in case I get like soap or something in my eye, I can, you know, touch it with my towel. So when I went to turn around, I actually grabbed the end of my towel and held it tightly over this part of my chest and then turned into the water and did what I had to do. And there was no way, I mean, the towel was still completely dry when I turned back around. So there was no way that, so that was just a little bit extra protection. If you're a little bit paranoid like I am, you know, these are little things that you can do to ensure that it's not going to get wet and come off or anything like that. Or 
to make sure that you can rinse properly because keeping your back to the shower is there's no way to properly rinse that way especially if you're a female you have things to lift up and stuff like that you know what I'm talking about so, so now that I'm finally at the end of the two week period I could take this off and I wanted to take it off on camera because that way you'll know if it's uncomfortable to take off or if it's like you know taking off a band-aid which it should be and so I'm ready I'm ready to get out of this thing and actually go scrub my skin right there so I don't know what it's gonna look like I'm scared it's gonna be really gross under here um, because this area has not been washed in two weeks <laughs> so I don't know I, I imagine if there's anything in there it's gonna be trapped with dog hair <laughs> okay so here we go okay getting it started stinks just a little bit but now it's not bad ow ow, ow. okay that that's a little painful. Ow, 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 ow. God. Ow, 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 ow. Woo! And it's off. Okay, now, it still looks blue. I don't see like a little orange thing. It's supposed to be like a little orange light or something once it comes out of contact with your skin. Alright. Ew. I'm glad that they gave me adhesive remover. Oh my God, it seriously looks like there's a whole bunch of my skin right there. So hey, if they want to do a DNA test, now's the time. Ooh, what does my skin look like? Is it red? Actually, it's not near as bad as I thought it would be. It's a little irritated. You can see where it's lifted up. Oh, and some of that's adhesive. So it is a little bit irritated, but it's not, seriously, not near as bad as I thought it would be. So that's a good thing. Oh, <laughs> you're supposed to use this to actually start uh, the lifting process. Well, a little late for that, huh? So, like I said, I just wanted you guys to know what it was like. Um... I'm thinking if this, this actually almost feels a little bit dry. No, it's not. It's like baby oil. Because I was going to say, if you, if you don't get it all off with this, if you have baby oil, baby oil usually it removes adhesive from your body. And so does alcohol. But because the skin was sanded first, I don't, I don't suggest alcohol at, right now. I would use like a baby oil or even maybe like a, an olive oil if you have an olive oil. It's probably going to take a bit, yeah. I don't feel it, but I can still see a piece right here. It, it does actually smell a little bit like, it's not like a, it feels like a baby oil, but it smells like, it smells like kind of like a vitamin E type oil or something. Like something that you would put on after a shower. Now that I'm rubbing the skin, try, trying to get that off, now my skin is getting irritated. So, that is post-cleaning. There's still a little bit up here. So, the next thing I'm going to do is just stick this in the back. What is this? Oh, this is a little survey so you can fill out to say if it was comfortable or whatever. And, you know, for the most part, it is, I, I forgot to mention that it feels a little weighty because, I mean, obviously it's a medical device inside of a little box. So, um, if I laid on my back, that's one of the things I forgot to bring up. If I laid on my back, I could feel the weight there and so that was a little odd to get used to as well so I'm going to fill this out put it in the box and they do give you a little piece look it says seal box with this tape and it is a tiny tiny little button to stick over the thing and the nurse told me that there have been times when they have received the box and the book, but the thing had fallen out of the box. 
So I'm actually going to attack the edges of this with package tape. There's no way that it's going to come out of this box at all. So I'm going to fill this out, the little survey thing. I actually need my glasses. I'm going to put no, I don't want to be contacted past for my experience um, past this. I think that this is enough. Uh, the device was easy to use, agree. The device was comfortable to wear. I, I'll strongly agree because even though there were times when it was uncomfortable, like in um, when you're sleeping, it felt weird, like I said, because it's not natural. But it wasn't uncomfortable to the point to where, well, no, maybe I'll put four on that one because it did it did hinder my sleep some I was able to go about my normal activities if I needed a monitor in the future I would wear a Zio yes have you ever worn a heart monitor before wearing the Zio device no okay so I crossed out the the um, strongly agree and put agree um, it was it was fairly comfortable as much as heart monitors go I know that there are some that are like computers, like little boxes, and you've got the leads that stick on, that would really have to be a pain in the rear end, to be honest. So, my information is on the front. It goes in the box. And I am going to... Um, I guess I will use their little sticker. And then... I will packing tape it too. So this is the box all sealed up with their little sticker before I attack it with packing tape and you don't need to see that part. So tomorrow this will go into the mailbox and get shipped back out and then when they uh, read everything that went on with my heart they will send it to my doctor and then when I go back to the doctor on the 22nd um, he'll have all the information that he needs and we can go from there. So. Uh, that's it. That's my experience with the Zio heart monitor. I just wanted to let you know what oh, it's the Zio XT. So I just wanted to let you know what it was like in case it ever came up for you. You would know exactly what you're fixing to experience for the next two weeks. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And hopefully you'll never need one of these. Hope you, I hope that you never do. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.